Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, uh, how many architects here? Okay. So, uh, my goal is to uh, walk you through a journey and then talk a little bit about uh, how you plan and um, uh, design a digital architecture because uh, the most of the project that, projects that we are working on touching some kind of a digital nature. So uh, the plan is to uh, uh, look at three things. Uh, what are the expectations? Our end users who's using our applications, the applications that we built, uh, what are their expectations? And then uh, what is the digital environment, like the applications that we build, where it runs and how it runs? and then how we architect it. So basically look at why we need to do this and what we have to do and how we are going to do it. So this is based on most of the experience. Uh, as Asangi mentioned, I work very closely with uh, most of our customers and helping them on various stages of their projects. So the content that I uh, listed here are more a kind of experience that uh, gathered uh, while working with many enterprises. So the uh, first uh, section is about the digital expectation, what uh, people expected. So I took a few slides from uh, another side deck that uh, I created and presented many times. Uh, so uh, where we are, so I usually call we live in a digital universe due to two reasons. First reason, I believe there are other galaxies exist. And then number two is um, the day-to-day um, uh, -day experience that we see. Uh, so this picture here I um, uh, used, it's from October 22nd, 2012. Uh, anybody can remember what happened in this day? No? Okay. So Hurricane Sandy hit uh, the east coast of uh, United States. A lot of people lost their uh, houses and then uh, people were living in uh, shelters. So the, um, uh, the, uh, with that, people looking to find basic needs like food, water, and shelter. So uh, the, while they are doing that, they try to charge their devices and find places that they can charge their devices because the entire East Coast went blackout during that day. So that kind of highlights uh, how we are engaged with these digital devices because we need to have a digital experience. Then the second slide I used to explain, if you unpack your backpack, you will see a number of devices, a number of charging uh, devices and then cables. We carry a heavy backpack today because without these uh, digital devices, we can't do our day-to-day -day activities. Then the uh, next picture about um, uh, how uh, the day-to-day -day life, these things are connected. I took that example from Amazon Echo that uh, usually my kids, like they use Amazon Echo a lot and they go and tell Alexa, tell a story. And then Alexa tell the story and we don't tell bedtime stories anymore. Alexa tell the stories. And then the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Amazon Echo improved a lot. It came with a basic sound system for the first generation. Second generation, what they did, they allow the Amazon Echo to connect with uh, uh, both sound system to provide better quality. Now the third generation is coming with Amazon Look. Uh, still not released, that you can go in front of Amazon, look in the morning and ask whether this particular uh, the address or whatever that you are wearing fit into you. And then it will check and tell, uh, and it will check uh, with the other people who's using Amazon Echo, whether they are wearing the same dress on the same day, the kind of information it provides. So it's kind of very linked to us. Then the last picture is about the latest uh, uh, the digital experience I am having. We got this Australian Shepherd, it's, he's uh, six months old now. So um, like uh, Fitbit, there's something called Barkbit that you can wear uh, on the color of uh, the dog and then see uh, what really the dog is doing, what is his patterns and um, how uh, long he walk per day so you can track uh, the his activities. So why I took this experience? Because all this digital um, experience is part of our day-to-day -day life and the same way all our consumers who's using the applications we build, they are expecting something similar as well. So the, this digital experience, uh, I categorize into four things. What they are expecting, first thing is it has to be a personalized uh, experience. And then the second thing is it has to be real time. And uh, the, the third thing is it has to be geosensitive, where this consumer is using this application. And then it has to provide some kind of predictive information as well. Uh, 
So I'll take an example. Uh, so this is the next generation um, uh, department store experience that a person will get. So you go into a department store, and based on your profile and uh, the things that you bought earlier, um, the department store, you can go and check what kind of dresses that available. So it's a personalized information. And then the dresses available, what exists in the store. So it's geosensitive. And then uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, it has to match with the uh, stock that uh, particular store is having. The information is real time. As well as it provides a lot of predictive information by looking at uh, the events that this person participate in, so on and so forth. So it's a complete digital in, uh, experience that provide and uh, cover all these four categories that we uh, identified earlier. Then the digital environment, now there's a digital need. So where are these, uh, uh, the experience run? So basically, um, I call it as a digital double. We have the physical person, and then we create a digital double inside uh, these digital ecosystems that will connect with other ecosystems exist. So it's called a digital workspace. A digital workspace can be a mobile app, it can be a web browser, or it can be a connected car, it can be a gas station. Wherever these applications can run uh, becomes a digital workspace. And that workspace connects with social uh, interactions and then knowledge bases, uh, business uh, functionality, so and so forth, and start providing this uh, experience for the uh, users. So the, the best example is a dating app. Uh, like if you take a, a dating app, uh, your digital double exists inside this um, application. And it connects with various other people and start exchanging data. So when there's a better match come, it will notify those two people, okay, there's a better match. So your digital double even active when you have a nap or you are watching TV or whatever the activities you are doing and it interact with these people. So uh, it's a better match that these applications providing because it access your social data and your uh, different type of usage patterns and so forth and then find the best person for you. So unfortunately the disadvantage of this thing is you will lose your first date because your digital double is dating that person before you physically meet him or her um, uh, for the, your first date. So then the, uh, the, if you look at it from the layers, what happens, a person is there, a person interact with the applications, applications connect with different type of platforms, and different type of platforms connect with uh, networks. So if you look at it, um, the map, the applications, and then the uh, different type of uh, capabilities that provide. So web apps are more kind of social uh, related applications, and then mobile apps are more geosensitive and a gaming kind of uh, experience provides. Then there are two side platforms uh, that, um, especially things like financial services that will connect only uh, the person and the systems. Uh, you can't share that kind of an experience. Then the multi-site platform comes like healthcare because you need to connect to multiple systems to provide information, like it has to connect to the patient data, it can, has to connect to the insurance data, so and so forth. And then even a citizen service will connect to various government services and provide information for a citizen. Then we get value networks that smart cities, connected uh, cars and smart hotels, connects to a lot of uh, different type of ecosystems and provide information for you. So that is how the applications categorize and then uh, connect with different type of networks. Then the, uh, the next thing is about like as architects, we used to uh, think a lot about how we can improve the processing and how we can have a clear data model, how we can have a clear data set. But today we need to think more and more about interactions because uh, all this digital experience is about different kind of uh, interactions. First thing is the human to machine interaction that we do a lot with the devices and then the machine to machine interaction happen a lot as well as um, uh, the machine to human interaction happens a lot. But unfortunately, uh, the digital experience, um, uh, it, it kind of reduced the human to human interaction because we don't interact much, but uh, that's the, how uh, these systems are designed and implemented. Then uh, if you look at the digital architecture, uh, I divide it into two sections because uh, as an architect we need to look at the business side of it as well as we have to look at the technical side of this problem as well. 
So the business side, um, basically the digital strategy of an organization is connect to the digital architecture. And uh, those two kind of uh, compensate each other um, very well. So when you change the digital strategy, you have to change the digital architecture as well. So the, the, uh, with the digital needs and then the, uh, uh, the um, sorry, something wrong. Uh, so the, with the, the uh, digital strategy changes, you need to uh, change the digital architecture. And then when the digital architecture changes, you need to change the digital strategy as well. So with the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the digital needs, uh, most of the organizations, they treat the company strategy as their digital strategy because you can't have two things, otherwise it doesn't um, align properly. So the, with that, uh, there's a new role called CDO, or the Chief Digital Officer came into the picture, that it fit, um, uh, like it most of the time the CDO directly work with the CEO, and then get help from other organizations, you need to implement a digital um, uh, uh, transformation strategy and uh, implementation plan, so we call it as a digital leadership team. I'm not sure how effective it's here, but uh, in US, most of the large enterprises, they have created this role. And um, uh, enterprise architects are now reporting to the CDO instead of uh, reporting to a CTO or a CIO. So that's one change that we see in the organization structures. Then the uh, business services, uh, this is something we identify even digital transformation came into the picture. So how we should start looking at uh, the transformation strategy? Uh, the four things, first thing is we need to look at the internal consumers because there are a lot of inter internal consumers using this application. Then we need to look at the external consumers. Uh, the next thing is we need to look at the current IT infrastructure because we can't start everything from scratch. So we need to start uh, things from, um, we need to re reuse the existing stuff. So we have to look at the current IT infrastructure. Then we need to look at the future IT strategies, what kind of strategies that we are bringing uh, into the system. Like it can be a microservices architecture, it can be a container architecture or a cloud native architecture, whatever the new things that we are bringing, you need to take a look. So that's where the, we have to start by taking into consideration these four things. Then when we are uh, doing this uh, business architecture, we need to consider uh, these five things. Uh, basically, the first thing is to understand the consumer behavior. So because the people are looking for a digital experience, what kind of an experience these uh, consumers are looking at. Then the, uh, the next thing is very important for architects because uh, usual pattern is we identify a data set or a data model, and then we identify a set of services, we write the services by using the data model and from those services we issue an API and most of the time nobody will use those APIs. So this uh, uh, approach is different. You design the consumer ex experience from outside in, basically identify the consumer behavior and consumer need first, then look at what kind of an application that you are going to build. Uh, for that particular user. Then identify to build this application, what are the APIs that I require, and then go and see from where I can fetch this data set. So if you do that and expose an API, the API will be used from day one and you can show ROI quickly. Then the uh, next thing is the different kind of channels because digital is not about web and mobile. You can have many stuff, uh, um, many other channels. Uh, like uh, the, it can be a gas station, it can be a connected car, or it can be a gaming console, because a lot of people play games these days. So as architects, we need to look at what are the other channels that we can reach uh, and give this digital experience into our consumers. Then the uh, next thing is uh, the utilizing the consumer data, uh, because we need to f uh, identify what are their usage patterns and then how they are using the applications. And even Paul talked about this iterative uh, approach. So to be iterative, we need to get a lot of feedback and then feed into the system and improve our application so, uh, and include those things in our architecture as well. Then the last thing is about seamlessly mesh the physical and digital experience because even we develop digital products, we need to look at what was the physical experience um, uh, the uh, consumer will get and mesh those two things. So I'll give you an example. I'm not sure Jonathan is here, our VP of um, 
uh, IoT. Uh, so Jonathan actually, uh, Jonathan Marsh, um, so he, he, he had an experience a couple of uh, months back. He usually come to our office in Mountain View every Tuesday and one day he forgot to bring his wallet and he uh, was looking to disc, uh, get some cash from an ATM. So without the wallet, he didn't have the ATM card, but he had the app in his mobile phone, this particular financial institute. When you use the app, it provides you a one-time uh, usage code that you can go to ATM and dispatch cash. So that's a really good experience. They kind of map the digital experience to the usual physical experience. So that is one another thing that we need to consider when we develop the application, how we can uh, do the changes, but stick to um, whatever the physical experience these uh, consumers are having previously. So let's uh, look at the technical architecture uh, a bit. So this is something that I found from the web that there are many architecture layers, enterprise architecture, and then you can see the digital architecture exists there. But uh, my advice is uh, it's not correct because I believe the enterprise architecture is the digital architecture because if an organization feels the company strategy is their digital strategy, then your enterprise architecture should be your digital architecture as well. So design that, uh, we refer a few things. So this is one um, diagram that I really like from Gartner. So they define three layers, system of record, system of differentiation, and system of innovation. So the system of record is what exists, all the data, and then the way you access the data. Then they define the system of differentiation. That's where the better ideas will come, or the ideas unique for that particular organization. And then top of that, you get the system of innovation. That's where you build new and innovative products on top of that. But uh, it's um, not enough to define architecture. This is very conceptual. So what we did, we referred this thing and came up with uh, a different type of layers. So the um, first on the top, you get the system of engagement. That's where the digital products will exist. And then you get uh, the, all the API services, integration, security kind of stuff. That's where the uh, system of integration. So we experience around 60% of a product contains that layer. And then uh, you get the um, system of record layer. That's basically how you store the data and then how you access the data. And system of automation about the CI, CD stuff, DevOps practices, and infrastructure related things. And then this new layer called system of intelligence come into the picture. That's where all the analytics and machine learning so and so forth uh, come into the picture. So yeah, one organization might not have all the layers, even you will have your system of record layer and you can directly uh, go into the system of engagement layer and then bring other layers at a relevant uh, time. Uh, but um, most of the systems looks like this that we um, see these days. So from that diagram, actually we drew this one uh, some time back, uh, sorry. Uh, it's a little bit outdated because uh, it's four years old uh, when SOA was very popular. Uh, so we uh, created this diagram by having a two-dimensional view. One is all these layers that I explained earlier, but this has enhanced by having an API layer in between uh, the services and the, uh, uh, the applications. And um, it is two-dimensional because um, uh, the architecture layers comes in one angle and then you get developed you develop the stuff and then you publish and you run these things in production environments and security governance and um, uh, the uh, analytics kind of quality of services come in a separate layer. So most of the components that you need and most of the functional capabilities you need exist in this diagram. That is something derived from that. And we are in the process of uh, uh, creating something similar with the latest uh, architecture patterns. But um, uh, so this is another view of it that we try to explain what's really happening today. So you get the data and data wrapped around services and services wrapped around integration, different type of orchestration and service composition. And those composite services exposed as APIs and APIs secured with identity and access management system. And those things need to be monitored. That's where the analytics come into the picture. And uh, we believe IoT is another channel that you can ex uh, like uh, send data as well less um, um, read data from different devices, and those things will help to build your digital products. 
If you look at this architecture in a modern microservices-friendly uh, architecture, most of the uh, uh, enterprises looks like this. You get all your microservices, and then you get a messaging channel, um, and top of that, you get the API layer. APIs connect to the, uh, the digital products or the end-use applications. And uh, this is a little different to typical microservices architecture. This is more kind of a pragmatic architecture that we created, that we believe you need to connect to your existing data and the services because uh, most of us starting our projects in brownfield, not from greenfield. So we still need to connect with those things. And most of the microservices architecture, uh, they, they don't have an integration microservices layer. Integration microservices is something that we uh, introduced, uh, especially using Ballerina as a technology that you can build integration uh, services. But um, even Gartner believe that if you look at the Gartner papers, they call these things called mini services that will connect different uh, microservices and create uh, composite services. Sorry about that. Uh, so the. Um, yeah, so this is what we see with uh, modern, uh, I think most of the new architectures that try to connect with the old world and then build a new world on top of that using various technologies. So as a technology company, we have uh, all the capabilities uh, to uh, fill these different architecture layers as well as the quality of services that you can see on the middle. Then the, uh, the uh, I think Paul briefly talked about platforms like uh, now you have uh, different digital products to be productive. You need to build platforms because uh, platforms create um, uh, a community and it creates a supportive structure. And platform is a, gov a government at that will provide some kind of governance into your projects. So if you look at it, uh, it looks like this. Uh, so we, you can call it in any name, but most of the uh, projects, they call these things as digital platforms, that you provide all these capabilities that we saw in that um, uh, the architecture diagram as a service, and different projects will come and plug and implement on top of that. So that is uh, one thing that uh, we see with many customers that they build platforms to uh, deliver these uh, products. Then the implementation side of it, like now you have a conceptual architecture uh, that uh, you can refer, but how you implement it, so I don't have uh, enough time to go in detail, but this is another uh, area that I do uh, talk a lot about this iterative architecture. If you are interested, then you can uh, go and see, uh, get that, uh, uh, this slide deck from that URL. So this is a presentation I did uh, here in London two weeks back at the O'Reilly Architecture Conference. So what I'm explaining in that um, uh, iterative approach, the problems that we have, especially with the waterfall and then RFP kind of an approach. Uh, then uh, the approach basically like think big, act small, like how you build an state architecture and then iteratively improve it, and how you plan the architecture with the product market fit. And then, uh, in the, um, uh, and then something I uh, introduced called a segment architecture, that how you can divide your architecture into small segments, and uh, inside each and every segment, you can iteratively improve that as well. So the, uh, uh, the, uh, the entire this uh, uh, track basically targeting about the, uh, uh, the digital strategy. Uh, so the start, uh, the, uh, I started with uh, the digital architecture, how you can build the architecture. And throughout the day, uh, this session, we are going to talk about different sections. Uh, so um, I'm uh, handling the track throughout the day. Uh, so basically, we will look at the cloud, uh, CI, CD stuff, and then how microservices will help uh, um, the uh, digital architecture, as well as we have one example, how you can convert your organization into a digital um, uh, enterprise, as well as uh, at uh, the last uh, talk about how you can leverage open source as a uh, way to implement these things. So that's about the digital strategy forum that we are going to run. Hope uh, you will stay uh, for the entire session. Uh, so uh, the, the, I'll finish my talk with this quote. I took uh, uh, somebody local and then uh, uh, not technical. Uh, so she said about this thing, how you can uh, uh, be part of this transformation strategy. Um, that's all I have lined up. Uh, I can take a couple of questions if you have any uh, before we are moving to the uh, next talk. 
Any questions?